Tell me uh, about your experience as uh, 18 Charlie. Right? <laughs> so when I first got to group, uh, it was a rude awakening. So I had graduated the Q courses. Yeah, I'm Green Beret now. It's badass. And I thought, you know, I just like, man, it's, it's going to be smooth sailing from here. And uh, I'm going to get to my company and I'm going to get to my ODA and everything's going to be easy. Yeah, because I, I just made it through all this training, right? <laughs> no. So I show up to the company and I'm like, hey, yeah, it's, uh, you know, Sergeant Hendrickson here. I'm checking in to the company. I uh, just finished training. I was like, I don't give a fuck. Who are you? Um, uh, Ryan Henderson checking in. Oh, yeah, man. Just just go over there, dude. So, okay, so I'm over there. I said, man, that's not important. Is that the guy doesn't know who I am. I'm Green Beret. So finally, they're like, all right, dude, you're going to this ODA. Like, all right, I'll get down there. These guys will care. I'm a Green Beret. This went through all this training. Pretty badass. Get down there and knock on the door. This dude opens the door and he's just in, he's just in ranger panties. It's like, uh, who the fuck are you, dude? I, well, I, I'm the, uh, you new 18 Charlie. What? We don't have a new 18 Charlie. Slam! Like, all right. Uh, <laughs> so what do I do? And then door opens back up and he's like, stand outside. It's your place of duty. Yeah. Stand here. We'll let you know. So I'm just standing there. Then they'd call me in for a thing or two. He's like, hey, what's your name? Uh, Sergeant Henderson. Man, your parents are jerks. My name is so-and-so. What's your name, stupid? It's like, oh, it's, it, it's Ryan. Well, still a stupid name, but yeah, get back outside. Nobody cares. Shut up. <laughs> what is going on here, man? And so slowly but surely, I mean, that... <laughs> so it was like stand outside the door for you know a week and then you get let into the team room and then you know it's like your you know best best piece of advice i got is is no one cares what you have to say we don't care you haven't done shit in your life shut your mouth open your ears and your eyes and learn because we're going to war you know um yeah when i got to my oda four months later head in afghanistan we're going to war so no one cares who you are we don't care you know we're not friends we're not because when i got into group Afghanistan 2010 that was that was a big year in Afghanistan huge year most casually producing year in Afghanistan and um back in and I say back then I'm not that <laughs> like it's not like oh I'm this old school dude no no I just mean back in 2010 until you prove yourself in combat no one gives two shits about you at all because you didn't do anything when bullets were flying you can talk all you want you can you know be the best runner or swimmer or whatever it is you know whether you're seal or green beret or marsoc or whatever you whatever no one cared until you proved yourself when rounds were flying and it actually meant something and so and that was i was just like wow i (laughs) i made it all the way through training why are you like you guys not know who i am no and we don't really care so because if you're not good you're gonna die and nobody wants to care so yeah um better be good so, oh, <laughs> so then, I mean, I guess you got out there. How, how did you find yourself as as the man up front? Because it's interesting to say like that is the place you control. It's where you felt most safe. But yeah. one could argue you're also the first to encounter an IED. Yeah. So as as an 18 Charlie, it's you know the demolition expert or whatnot. Um, we go through IED courses. I mean, the Taliban were extremely good at adapting to our. Um, Tactics, techniques, and procedures, TTPs. So the Taliban were very good at it. They knew like, okay, when these guys are coming up on a house, they're going to put security up here, here, and here. Okay, we're going to put IEDs here, here, and here because we know that this is where they're going to do security. And then they're going to move up on the door like this. They're probably not going to just be up on the wall. They're going to come at it at a 45 degree angle. So we're going to put IEDs right here. And then we'll put, they're probably going to step over the threshold one guy's going to, you know, I mean, the number one man's never wrong. Number two guy, you know, you go the opposite direction, whatnot. But we know kind of how. And so they were able to adapt to our TTPs and they would IED, you know, those areas. And we learned a little bit about it in the Q course as an 18 Charlie, the only MOS that really did. Um, so you're like, all oh, right. And they're like, all right, you're the IED guy because you learned all this stuff about IEDs. Like, well, hold on, hold on. <laughs> 
And so when I got in the country, we had counter IED guys that were Afghans and those dudes extremely good. They could look down a road and be like, that's not right. That's not right. That's not right. IED, IED, IED. Like, how do you know? He goes, I just know. Well, how? Well, because I'm from here and I know that that doesn't belong there and that's not right there. It's like, damn. And so I started to learn um, that, yeah, you have all this equipment and mind detecting equipment, all this other stuff. But I have found the majority of my IEDs with my eyeballs, you know, because it's ground signed. It's something's not right here. Would I put one here? OK, then maybe there's one here. And all that was learned in Afghanistan. But I ended up in the front because of my MOS. It's like, oh, well, you're the IED guy. You trained on it in uh, in uh, the Charlie course. And I was like, ah, not really, <laughs> but OK. But I ended up like I, I ended up loving it because I could control my environment in the front. I can, you know, you're never going to be able to control what the enemy does. Um, but if I'm in the front, the only thing I'm worried about is is what, you know, what I can't control. But I can control everything around me. And so me having that control, um, it created safety for me. Even though I was probably the first one to get my face canoed in, it created a safety bubble because I had control over being in the front. And it's, it, it, it's weird to explain, but it's just how my mind works. Like I control, you know, what I can control. And if it's meant to happen, then it's going to happen. You can't control that. It's just that's, you know, cause I do, I, I believe that, um, the beginning of your life and the end of your life are written. They're set in stone. There's nothing you can do about it. when you're born and when you're dead, that's done. But those pages in between, they're all blank. So it's how you're going to fill them out. So if this is how I'm going to die, it's already done. It doesn't matter if I'm in Afghanistan or at home. This is how this is. The, I will die this day. And there's nothing you can do to change it. And that's my mindset. And so being in the front, you know, if I get my face shot off or whatnot, it was going to happen that way because that was, you know, that's my ending chapter of my story. But um, I can control my environment and I guess I like to have control because <laughs> so, it's safety. 